just heading to the barn for the day. Sun's just peeking up. I don't check at night. This group of ewes is pretty responsible. And the number one success for the farm is my well-being. If I'm running short on sleep too many days in a row, it just things start to suffer. With ewe lambs, it's a little bit more challenging because they lose track of their lambs a lot quicker, so you want to keep an eye on them. I don't have cameras in the barn yet. It's not a very far walk from the house back to the barn. So in the middle of the night, I'll just try and leave them for seven hours maximum between checking them, just so the, if they have too many lambs, I don't lose track of them. At this point in lambing, I think there's only 25 left. There shouldn't be too many lambs running around. They shouldn't lose track of those. And it's a lot easier to pair them up. If it's beginning of lambing or in the middle of a cycle, I'll get up and just keep an eye on things just to make sure everything stays organized. So whether you are looking at getting into sheep, have been in sheep, know way more than I do, or uh, if you have nothing to do with farming and you just want to enjoy your day, I hope you find these videos well. I can share a little bit about what I do every day and hopefully bring a smile to your face. That's my goal. So when I get to the barn in the morning, usually there's been newborn lambs. At this point, we've made a pen everywhere we can make a pen. Anything that's been born two days ago, uh, they get processed and moved into a group pen. One of the key factors for success for keeping lambs alive is the transition out of the jug into a group pen. I really try not to go more than eight or 10 pairs at the most per pen, and then you start a new group pen. And then as that time increases, uh, you can combine them together a little bit easier. But if you get them too busy and too many lambs in at once, they start losing track of their mothers, they can start getting weak, things start going downhill. So I found huge success in just minimizing the amount of animals together in a group pen. Which makes it tough when you're having, like, a couple days ago we had 20 ewes lamb at once. And so to combine all 20 of those together all at one big time is a bit of a shock to them. And that can create some issues down the road. Uh, if you can make it past three days in a group pen, you're probably fine. And then you can slowly introduce more and more. These will go outside into a big uh, open pen outside probably next week. And so that's a huge area. There's lots of space for them, but if you put them all there together, then they can very easily get lost. So I'm trying to introduce everything as slow as I can, but to build up so that they're all together. Everyone's used to being together in the barn here before they go outside. Because there's the stress of being outside, all the weather, shocks, everything, a whole new area for the lambs. Everything has to get sorted. They find the sheds, they find the water, they find the creek feed, things like that. And just trying to reduce the amount of stress on the animals and uh, in that transition period, it makes things a lot easier. And that keeps your lambs going and keeps them healthy. The most important part when I start the day is making sure they're dry. The use with lambs are most important. Like I said, we've been out of pen space, so I just have the bare, bare minimum of group area left for use to have a lamb. Last night I came out here and there were a bunch of, of ewes lambing. I went through the ones that were born two days ago that are going to get processed today and I doubled them up in jugs. They know what their lambs are, they're happy, everything should be fine. And then this morning now that I'm here, start the day, process everything, group pen them, make new jugs, get the newborn ones from last night all put together.
screwed up this morning. We had ewes and lambs running everywhere, and usually a ewe, you can tell when she's lamb, and the lambs that are with her usually are hers. This morning, nothing seemed to match up. There was one that was claiming lambs, and sometimes before they lamb, they'll claim lambs, which makes it a little bit tough. So I had two lambs that no one else seemed to want, and this you wanted them. She put them in the pen. A few hours later, we learned, no, she doesn't want them. And now she's got a water bag showing. So they're clearly not hers. Don't know where they belong, but I definitely missed that one. At least we know when she's in the pen, when she has lambs, those are going to be her lambs. So I try and keep my silage pile as fresh as I can. It's really important with sheep that you don't have spoiled silage or opportunity for mold to grow. I use a lot of tires. It'd be nice to have sidewalls, but they're pretty expensive and you gotta start somewhere. So I cut holes in all the sidewalls, my tires, and then point them so the water drains out of them. It makes a bit of a difference. It's still tough though when it freezes and they turn to big giant hockey pucks full of ice, especially on a nice warm day like this. This plastic's pretty slippery, but. So there's people out there that caution against silage with sheep. You definitely have to be careful. I do all my silage myself, so I'm able to do it nice and slow and steady. We only do about 200 ton, and I just pile it on the ground. I try and make sure it's on a grassy area. Usually the silage from last year has enough barley and it'll grow up. Then I can tramp it down and pile on top of that instead of just on the bare dirt. And you don't have issues with mold leaching up from the ground. Also make sure it's well packed with a good oxygen barrier on it. And I haven't had issues yet. You have the odd spoilage, but I spend a lot of time making sure that it's packed well, finished smooth, the cover gets put on right away. And I use a lot of tires and I think all those things together definitely contribute to success. Now if I had to do a thousand ton that way I think it would slip a bit and we might see a little bit more spoilage in that sense. With the amount of sheep that I have it's not very many. Uh, this system works pretty good. kind of jobs I try and stack up for a day when lambing's a little bit slower. Another thing is it's pretty nice to do these kind of things when it's a warm day. Two weeks ago it was like minus 45, today I think it's plus three and that makes a bit of a difference when you're standing on a silage pile trying to clear the snow off and cut the plastic through and you start losing feeling in all of your body parts. Today I'm sweating too much, I'm gonna have to lose some layers. So I line all the sides of my plastic with uh, bucket fulls of manure. So in the, in the winter here, usually that's all frozen. So I just scrape away at the snow. See it right there. Then I know that's the edge of the plastic, or at least where the silage starts. Works pretty good. Makes a bit of a mess in the spring when it melts, but I just pile it all up. So I'll cut the sides of the plastic and then up the center of the pile. There you go, nice fresh silage. Smells good, no mold on the top. Three feet of plastic back, that should do me for maybe two weeks. And if I was real fancy, I would take the snow off the plastic first because every bucket of snow in the mixer, it throws off your weight, but I'm not real fancy. Thank you. 